Welcome to Educate, Inform, and Challenge. My name is Teresa McLennan. I'm the Executive Director of the Women and Children's Shelter of Barrie. Uh, The goal of our program is to talk about the lives and experiences of women. We talk about gender equity, violence against women, areas where decision-making is happening, women in the role of politics. And we're just really thankful that you've come along this journey with us. I want to be uh, mindful and just to caution our viewers today. We are gonna be talking about the experiences of women uh, in particular, having had a sexual assault. And so please be mindful of your own wellness as we dive into this topic. And if you feel like you need to take a break from listening, please do so. And also before we begin, we want to thank our Indigenous community for allowing us to share in this space, allowing us this forum and to be on this land and to have these conversations. We thank you. So today, I am really pleased to welcome my guest, Erin, from Barry Police Services. And Erin's going to be talking to us about some of the initiatives that Barry Police Services have put in place in order to address sexual assaults when they happen right here in our community. Welcome, Erin. We're so happy that you're with us here today. Thank you very much for having me. It's good to be here. So, Erin, we're going to dive right into this conversation. So, The place I want to start is just a recognition that very few women come forward to report sexual assaults. And in fact, what we know is that that number is about 5% of all sexual assaults actually get reported to police. Why do you think that that number is so low? You're right when you say that is a very low number. And I don't know that there's a a very simple answer to it. Um, I think I think one of the main reasons that you do see it is that when you're a victim of a sexual assault, it can be a very dehumanizing and humiliating experience to go through. I mean, I think victims often will go through, a, you know, a wider range of emotions from feeling like maybe they did something that caused it to happen. Um, we see times where maybe the person who's the perpetrator is a person of trust in their life. And there's a, there's a deep feeling of betrayal and then your conflict, their victims are conflicted about uh, whether, you know, they would, they should come forward to the police and, and, you know, just for fear of reprisals. Uh, Maybe it's a family friend. It's there, there, there's very, there's, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, You know, also you can see where, they're just maybe fearful of the whole process coming to police, coming to a police station, you know, maybe having the feeling that they're just going to have to speak to some random person and divulge this really intimate thing that's happened to them. Um, And just the fear of the unknown and going through the court process and how does that work? And um, is there anybody to support me? Uh, These are all things that I think weigh on you know, someone's mind and emotions when they're thinking about coming forward. Um, and it, it can be, it's very individualized. I mean, again, it's, it's a very traumatic experience. It's a violation of a person's well-being. And it's just something that um, can really impact someone. And yeah, so that's why, you know, long story short to the beginning, it's where I, I don't think that there's one reason. And there's, there's a whole combination of things that that come into play as to why people don't come forward. And as a police service, I mean, it's something that we realize too. So we, we want to make the process of coming forward to us as seamless as it can be. Um, and, you know, in collaboration with community partners as well to just allow people to be able to come forward and feel like they can do that. And I would, I, I think it's really good for our viewers to hear that because uh, I think what is important to community members is to know that, Barry Police Services in particular recognizes that and is looking at ways uh, to try and make that better for anybody who comes forward with a sexual assault. And so, and and I agree with you. I mean, certainly our agency supports women who have had an experience of violence, which includes sexual assault. And there can be a real um, uh, interrelationship between a lot of those factors that you spoke about. So one of those factors in particular is that there can be a fear of having to certainly report to police, but having to report through the court system or or go through those pieces, right? And so how 
how would you describe that experience for anybody who makes a report and wants to go through that court process to have their experience heard? How would you describe that experience for them? Well, first of all, I mean, it can be a very lengthy process, um, you know, at times from the time when they first come into the station and uh, one of our investigators takes a statement. And if it progresses to the point, you know, where there's criminal charges that are laid, often trials can be months, if not, you know, a year, year and a half down the road. Um, you're kind of constantly being, it's going to be something that's over your head while this is going on. So, I mean, it, it is something that um, would weigh on you a little bit. Um, also, then you, you, when you deal with, you know, the when it comes time, if you're testifying, you're, of course, uh, the, the accused has the right to a defense counsel. At times, you'd be cross-examined and you can be questioned and challenged on what, what it is that your story is about and what happened. Um, but we, I mean, we do our best to support victims along the way, too. And there are, we do have things in place through like our victim services. And, and there are community partners, too, that can help people navigate these challenges. But it is, it is a challenge, to be honest, and it's, and it's something that um, can be a long haul. Mm -hmm. So let's help educate our community about this process, because um, what I think is important to know is that even though someone has had a sexual assault happen to them, and they may be feeling like, yes, I want to I want to press charges, I want to go through the court process, and they have in their mind that that is what they want to do. But not all cases will actually make it to that step. So help us to understand why that would be the case. Well, I mean, the main reason, obviously, as the police, we have, we're, we're bound by the laws of Canada. We, we, have to, we have to meet what's called reasonable and probable grounds. And there's times where um, there's limited evidence available um, to actually take a, like, take a complaint to the point of prosecution. It doesn't mean that it didn't happen. It didn't, doesn't mean that, you know, what the person's going through isn't real. But we do need to meet a threshold of evidence in order to lay a charge, to arrest someone, and to put the case before the courts. So... There, there are there are a number of ways that a that a case can be completed without there being charges and and in recent years there's been a there's been more of a emphasis on for for years and years the police we essentially had if a, if a person came forward with a complaint of a sexual assault we either were able to lay charges or it was found the the status was found to be as unfounded and. Rightfully so. I mean, that, that is a term that can, you know, have a lot of negative con connotation for someone who's a victim where you feel like it's being labeled as, well, this didn't happen. That's not the case necessarily in, in, a, lot of, in a lot of these instances. And it's a terminology that, um, you know, again, rightfully so is starting to make its way out, like, out of our vocabulary um, in a lot of these cases. Again, there are going to be the odd time where it just evidence is going to show that a case is unfounded but we have different clearance statuses now that you know sometimes it's we just don't have enough evidence to proceed so a case will be you know at the time close as insufficient evidence to proceed um i think it's just important that there there is that differentiation between it's not that it didn't happen we believe and it's not that the police don't believe it in some cases it's just that we do have to meet a certain standard of evidence in order to bring charges forward. And I should imagine that a piece of that also is that it is incredibly hard for anyone to uh, talk about an experience of sexual violence, uh, sexual assault that's occurred to them. And I should imagine that if police can deem that there is not enough evidence to proceed, that there's also a bit of a, protection that the police and they want to inform that person that there's not a lot of evidence here to carry forward and it will be a very hard road if we if you choose and want to pursue it right that there has to be an honest dialogue with that person about that yes that yeah that's right i mean as i stated earlier i mean the court process itself is quite a process and if from the outset um 
there's indications that it's going to be even more difficult. And again, it's individual to the person who's making the complaint. Some people won't have an issue with it. Some people, you know, when they, when they learn what, like I'm going to be cross-examined or I'm going to be really challenged on this information. Um, it can be very intimidating and it's, and it's, Sometimes a court process itself and just the dealing with the legal system can be traumatic, traumatic enough that some victims as well choose to tell their story to us and request that we don't go forward with charges. Um, but, you know, they want to get it reported. So, you know, often they're, they're thinking of things like they don't want the perpetrator to do it to somebody else. Um, they're looking to just try to get some closure to the event. Um, there, there's so many different reasons, but, um, it's, it's just, it's just something that each individual person going through has to, in conjunction with, you know, the police and, and services that can help them decide what, what's going to be right for them. So we are going to take a short break and we are going to circle back to this conversation. And I think, you know, probably the place for us to leave off before we have our commercial is really just to encourage and support anyone who might be listening today that if you have experienced a sexual assault and you feel like you want to speak to someone, certainly you can reach out to police and have that conversation with them and have dialogue about what the process may look like if it proceeds. And we really do want to share this information today because we want our community to be informed. It is important to know what your options are so you can make an informed decision about what you decide to do. But just know that in no way would we want to discourage anyone from coming forward, but we want to create a dialogue so that you know what your options are. So we are going to put a pin in this conversation for the moment. And when we return, we're going to dive in a little bit more to how the community is looking at unfounded sexual assaults and reviewing those and what that process looks like. So please stay with us. This program is brought to you by Ignite TV. Now you're in command. Visit rogers.com for more details. At St. John Ambulance, we're all about community. We teach life-saving skills and provide community support through our volunteer services. All St. John Ambulance product sales and training registrations support these important services. Volunteer, donate, or enroll in a program today so we can continue to have an impact on our community. Visit sja.ca to learn more. At St. John Ambulance, we do more than save lives. We change lives. to educate, inform, and challenge. We are talking with my friend Aaron from Barry Police Services today, and we are talking about when a person comes forward with an allegation of sexual assault and what Barry Police Services process is in terms of making a case determination. And we're talking about unfounded uh, sexual assaults or insufficient evidence to proceed sexual assault. And so... That's where we're going to pick up our conversation. And Aaron, I'd like to talk about and really educate our community about what process or processes does Barry Police Service have in place to ensure that due diligence has happened in those particular cases that are unfounded or insufficient evidence to proceed? Yes, okay. Yeah, no, when... We as the police re first receive a complaint of a sexual assault. Um, often, uh, I'll take you kind of through the process of how it'll make its way through our police service. So if it comes into our dispatch, uh, oftentimes we'll have a uniform officer may attend and just take some basic information from the person that wants to make the complaint. Um, and then it'll be followed up by a member of my unit, which is called the Crimes Against Persons Unit. So we would have a detective constable involved in all of our sexual assault allegation investigations. And they would often then arrange interviews and would deal with 
taking that investigation through to whether it got to the point where charges were laid or if, as you stated, if it gets labeled as unfounded or insufficient evidence to proceed or the victim declines to proceed, uh, it'll get cleared at that point. Um, throughout the process, uh, the supervisors in the unit are, are also, you know, monitoring what's going on with these investigations. When they are closed out, um, anything that is closed out other than a criminal charge, we put on a list and we, we now are part of a review committee. It's called it's the Sexual Assault Review Committee, which is made up of members of the public, which are part of organizations, the Women's Shelter, uh, Native Friendship Center, uh, the uh, Gilbert Center is represented, um, and they have civilian members who we try to do it once a month, get together, and we review, the civilian members will review the, the cases that the police have deemed unfounded, insufficient evidence, uh, or that the victim declined to proceed. And they, were, they are given the avenue to comment on and review what the police have done. So when those, re when those reviews are done and suggestions are made, then it, we're, we're obligated as a police service to then look at those suggestions and, and look at them in the scope of the investigation and, and go with it whatever direction it may take us. So I know in, in the, one of our recent ones, it was suggested that maybe you know, the, the clearing status as unfounded wasn't warranted. So I took that back. I had a review of the case again myself after getting that feedback from the group and in, in looking at it and speaking to the investigator, I, I concurred that, yes, I think, you know, maybe this was a case where labeling it as uh, insufficient evidence to proceed was more appropriate. And again, it might seem like a small thing, but sometimes to victims, it can be a very big thing, right? To say uh, something is unfounded or if it's just, you know what? We it, something happened. We don't know maybe entirely everything, but um, it just gives some validation to 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 the to the victim in that case. Um, so I think it's a valuable thing to have people that are outside of the police service that have some expertise in the field, whether it's through dealing with victims or dealing with members of our community, that can give some quality input as to you know maybe the methods we're using, the way we're talking to people. Um, and it just, it, it creates a little more accountability for the police to the public and it, and it helps both, it helps both sides. I believe like it helps our community partners to understand what we as the police are facing uh, and the realities that we deal with as, and vice versa, that we're seeing different perspectives. You know, it's not so much black and white. This is the law. This isn't, it, it's really, it really helps to humanize the whole, process and just gives a lot more I think compassion accountability and it just helps us do a better job in moving forward and doing some real work in helping helping the victims of these crimes so is the review committee process is that something that's happening across Canada or across Ontario like are you aware of other police services that are doing the same thing yeah, it is. It is something that is starting to be to grow. There are, uh, I believe, the Ontario Provincial Police does it. Um, there are other police services that do it in different forms. It may look slightly different in different areas, um, but it, it is it is a process that is really gaining traction and is becoming a a, a commonplace. So I think it's. I think I just think it's been a valuable tool to just give to, to give another set of eyes onto a situation. And I, I think it does really help. And I should imagine that, you know, none of us like to kind of have our work critiqued or evaluated by outside folks, you know, that that's a very vulnerable, challenging place to be. But how have, you know, when you have to go back and have discussions with officers who may have been part of that case, can you reflect on just how you feel those conversations go in general and the openness to learning? Yeah, no, I, I think the openness to learning is there. Um, as you mentioned, of course, um, you know, human nature often is we, we tend to not like to take criticism always, but I've, I've found that, you know, there is an openness to learn and it's, it's just about being mindful going forward. I think, again, it's important to just realize that 
yes, we have certain realities that we have to deal with, but we have to be compassionate. We have to, we have to always strive to be doing our best. And if that means that, you know, once in a while, we have to really take a look in the mirror and go, maybe we need to change the way we're doing something. That That's something that has to be done. And I have seen an openness to, to that going forward. And I, I've, I've gotten fairly, you know, positive feedback. Again, it's sometimes that you don't want to hear, maybe you should have done this instead of that. But I think it's something that is a valuable tool. And it, it's something that's worth continuing. And I think I would just add that as a member of that committee, I really value that Barry Police Services has um, created this committee and is really taking it to heart and feels it's very important that there is an outside bodies that are looking at the processes for Barry uh, Police Services, right? And it certainly does help us as well to support women in our agency who've experienced a sexual assault, to be able to have conversations with them about the steps and the processes that you folks, uh, Barry Police Services, would go through. So we just really appreciate that. And when even when you speak of accountability, we feel a sense of accountability as a uh, citizens, community members that review those cases as well. And so it's very much a shared accountability, which we appreciate being a part of. And, and I thank you for that work. And I thank you for the openness. So I want to ask this question, because I want to make sure that if there's anyone listening today, who has an experience of sexual assault. So if there is someone right now who's watching our show, and has had that uh, experience, knowing that the case may be unfounded or insufficient evidence. What would you say to that person? Would you want that to discourage them for coming forward? No, I mean, I, my hope would be that it doesn't discourage someone from coming forward. I think, you know, speaking to someone you trust, maybe a, off the off the top is the best way to go forward even even if it's before speaking to the police like speak to a a, a colleague a friend a, a family member and and just get some advice about you know how how to go forward and it, i as the police we want we don't want to ever discourage a victim from coming forward you know the the realities of the legal system withstanding, we need to be compassionate towards victims. We are more than happy to take complaints and to take reports, and we want to investigate these to the best that we can. I just think for the, the first step, if you're debating whether to come forward or you're struggling with the whole thing is reach out, reach out to community resources. I know online there's community resources. There's we can, the police can put you in contact with victim services without even having made a complaint. We can, we can give you those numbers. You can call into the station and we can put you in touch with them. If you don't even want to speak to the police, we can help you get in touch with victim services. And maybe that's the first step going forward. I know one of the things too, that an initiative that was started here a couple months ago was we've had a creation of a, of an app. It's called the speak out app. And it's an anonymous online reporting tool where you can make a report of a sexual assault. Um, it does come to us, but it's anonymous. Uh, and then we, and then that's, it's, it's similar along the lines of like a crime stoppers type uh, thing where you can anonymously online report this information. It can get, it gets to us, we review it, and then we can look for patterns. We can look for repeat maybe perpetrators, names that are coming up, um, things like that. So again, that's another tool. Uh, reaching out to community resources is the other thing, but I, I would hope that people are not going to be discouraged from seeking help if, if they find themselves in a position where they don't know where to turn. And thank you for that, because I think it is really encouraging for anyone in our community who hears that from Barry Police Services saying to reach out to us and call us. And so, and I also thank you for that really helpful piece of information. And we are going to share the link to the Speak Out app, that anonymous tool that anyone, men or women, can report a sexual assault that's happened to them. And I mean, we've, we've only got a short period of time that's left, Aaron, but when you get information on the Speak Out app that comes to you and you see a pattern happening, let's say 
at uh, a grocery store that there's a sexual a pattern of sexual assaults that's happened behind the grocery store. What do you do with that information? Well, the information received on an app like that can just really help us direct our resources towards a potential problem area. Like in the example that you give, if we, you know, all of a sudden we hear, we get three people saying behind this certain store, this is happening. We can direct patrol to set up regular patrols there. Um, there's so many ways it, it can just help us direct resources to the areas where they're needed. And I think that's going to, that's really the, the main thing that comes out of an anonymous app like that is it, it gives us a an indication of where some of the problem areas are so i think that's that's the main benefit in terms of a law enforcement side of it um and it's just a, it's just another tool to give uh, victims a, an opportunity to come forward certainly we have shared that um that link and that app with women who are in our shelter because we we know that so many women have had an experience of sexual violence. And of course, we talked about that 5%, you know, only that get reported to police. But it does create this other avenue for anyone, men or women, to be able to make a report. And, and I appreciate what you're saying, that there is value in terms of police putting their resources, you know, to where they're seeing a pattern happening. We certainly know there's an incredible benefit for men and women to be able to tell their story, to talk about their experience. And we often support folks to say, you know what, just write it down, write yourself a letter, write yourself a story, talking about what you've gone through and what you've experienced. And this is another way to do that anonymously. But I think that it can also help when you see those patterns emerging, there's a potential that it will protect and save other people from having an experience of sexual violence. And so there's an individual process and benefit, but there can also be a wider community process and benefit. Would you agree? Absolutely, yeah, no, and that's the goal, right? Is we want this to be a benefit for our community. Yeah, yeah. So I think we're going to have to end today, but there's so much wonderful information that you shared with uh, our community today, really helpful, insightful, and you are informing folks to know a piece about what the process looks like. But if we can have a takeaway from our discussion, it is that if you are anyone who has had an experience of sexual assault and sexual violence, and you would like to speak with someone, please feel free to call Barry Police Services. And it may not need that you need to do anything further with it other than to talk about your experience and also get referred to those services that could continue on to support you. So Aaron, I want to thank you so much for today and thank our community with being with us today as well. And we hope to see you next time. Bye.